Hello, good evening. Apologies for the late arrival. Um, yeah, technology, the wonders of technology. Just uh, basically starting off with a new camera and um, just sort of having a few teething problems. Hopefully it should be a better quality picture. That's the idea, that's why we've changed cameras. Um, yeah, so let's get straight on to, uh, welcome to our live stream. Let's get straight on to what we're demonstrating today. Now the idea with this one is it is geared towards um, beginners, anybody sort of starting out and um, a, a sort of simple project. It's a, it's a Valentine's project, but we're gonna go through the process. So this little one here, as you can see, look, using these little lights that we found, there we are. We found some simple little lights, it, it lights up just like so. So it's a Valentine's gift, but it's an ideal one for anyone who's um, who's just starting out with the with the scroll saw. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through the methods that we use and how we go about doing our scroll saw projects. So let's get straight into it. Um, what I've done, I've marked out what we're going to do. To do that, then, we use a similar sort of setup for doing all of our different scroll saw projects. When we're doing these, I do a design on paper. So we draw the design on the paper, first of all. We use this carbon paper, then, to transfer that design onto the wood itself. So you stick it down on the wood itself, transfer it across using carbon paper, and then you begin cutting everything out. At the end of this, as we always demonstrate, we will hand carve to finish off. But that's the basic sort of process that we go through when we're doing this. Another thing then I just wanted to share with you today, when it comes to woodworking, we're always looking, we're always interested in uh, improving, developing. So this week, I, I've heard a little bit about these on different forums. Some of yourselves have mentioned this as well. Pegasus blades. So I thought, okay, let's have a little look at it. Always basically be willing to learn, always be willing to try different things. So I got a Pegasus blade in there. I got one of our trusty Nikua ones just in case it doesn't suit uh, myself. But I thought, yeah, let's give it a go. Let's try them out. Another time there, another video, we're actually going to do like a review and have a look at what our thoughts are and, um, and basically share our thoughts on the different blades and what our preference is. So let's get straight into it. We've marked out the project. From there, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to drill our holes for doing that pierce work. So that's the next part of the process. Drill those holes in preparation. So we've got two to do on our little cupid. Now it's not ideal as well. I don't like drilling towards the bed. That's why I got a nice thick piece of wood. I don't like drilling towards the bed of the scroll saw, but for the purpose of this demonstration, it'll do the job. This as well, what I've actually done, always be sort of prepared. Anyone does anything like a live stream, I've got a spare for this because this is quite a delicate bit of scroll saw work. There's a good chance I, there's a little bit of a a weaker area there and there's other areas that we've got to keep an eye on. So I've done a, a spare just in case I need it. Now for the main body then, we've also got a single hole to drill on the heart ready for doing that pierce work. I think we've got a comment on there, dude, if you want to check that one for me. Okay. There we are. So we just drill a hole and then once we've finished with this one, once we do drill this hole, we'll get on to our scroll sawing. Hello, Tommy. Thank you for joining us again. Glad you can join us. Great to have you here, as always. Yeah, it's good that we seem to have a little bit of a community building up around it, which is, is fantastic. We really do appreciate that. Now, as always, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the volume down on the mic. Hopefully that mic is okay, because as I said, new camera, new settings. So, there we are. Now, hopefully that's turned it down. It's just to reduce the amount of noise uh, that you'll get coming through on uh, on the actual um, the live stream. Any comments as well? Any questions? Get them in. We'll do our best to answer them.
Right. I think we've got a few more comments on there. Do we just want to catch up? Just going to turn that mic back up there. Right. So as you can see, we've done our background. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check a couple of things. I'm going to check on there. Midnight Joker, Max, Holiday, Tommy. Ah, glad you joined us. Right, so I'm just going to check these ones, just to check the lights, just that they fit. Yes, yeah, so you can see that one's fitting nicely. And then this one. Right, I'll probably have to take a little bit more. This top one, what, I don't know, may go in, may just about squeeze in. I think I will probably take a little bit more. No, it will, it will squeeze in. So we can jam that one in there. There we are. Yeah. So it's a bit of a tight, tight fit on that one, but it'll just about, just about fit in there, and that's what we want. We want a tight fit on Are those two lights, lights there. Yeah, they're, we we showed them. They're little lights. They they come with a little bit of cardboard just to stop them coming on initially. Oh, now the okay. reason um, that that I've done that first is I'm actually going to hand that on to Dad now, and um, I'm going to just get him to put it on the belt sander just to make sure that that bottom edge is flat. So it'll stand up, no problem at all. So we get it nice and flat. And the other thing then, we get those marks out. When it comes to doing the Cupid, because I'm gonna hand carve everything, I'll carve away all of the lines. But this one, I'll put it on the belt sander. If you're doing this project yourself and you haven't got access to a belt sander, you can just hand sand it all down, or you can just bevel that edge, just take off the sharp edge using um, using a, a, a chisel or a gouge. Now going back to these blades, yeah, I, it's something that I'm interested in, in getting some feedback from everyone else. One, one thing I chose, uh, the, the Pegasus blade I chose was a number nine. And so far, it's not quite as fine a finish as the Nikua number nine, but the feed speed, the, 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 the speed that you can actually work at is, is higher. So I'm thinking that I probably should have gone for a number seven or a number five. So anybody got any, you know, input? Anyone got any more experience on that? Let us know because yeah, it's an interesting area. Another thing, and I throw it open to everyone, with the Pegasus blades, I also tried getting again some spiral blades. Now I've tried with spiral blades in the past and I just don't get on with them. But one question I've got, and I don't know if anybody can answer this one, when it comes to clamping the spiral blades, they don't fit in as well as the reverse tooth blades or the, the standard blade. So has anybody got any, why is that? Um, why are they done like that? Why, why can't they attach? So as I, as I go on to scroll saw our, our Cupid now, if anybody has any information on that, let me know because it's something that I, I'm interested in knowing what, what the story is with the spiral blades. So there we are. I'm going to scroll saw our Cupid. Hopefully we won't go and damage it because it's quite delicate, that one. I'll hand the this one here to Dad and he'll sand that a little bit. So we just turn the mic you, down. Before you do, have you explained yeah. the project? Why, why it's a Cupid and hearts? Well, the idea with Valentine's coming up, yeah, it, it, this is a Valentine's themed project. Also then, here in Wales, we were talking about it in last week's live stream, we have another Valentine's Day, St. Dwynwyn's Day, um, something that we always, always promote. So I was looking for a Valentine's themed project other than doing a love spoon because you know that's what we do so yeah that is the the sort of thought thought process behind it
yeah? Two comments Mascot. Did you want to yeah? pick up. Yeah. Um, careful you don't twist the end of the Pegasus spider blades. I think right. the option one may have straight end. I'm not sure as I don't get on with spiders either. No. Think of something in common with Midnight Joker? Yeah, no, it's it's an interesting one because um right, as you're saying, so sort of just you know, with the pliers or something, just to open them up. I can understand the design where they do not fit um, nicely in in the blade holder. It seems but a strange. Also says there's another brand that Charles Deering uses, right? Which has straight ends, right? Uh, you gotta find out from him. And yeah. the Americans and Canadians seem to favour the spirals, and the UK go for straight. Isn't so it? It's interesting, isn't it? I. I uh, in that Joker, I think it's playing Dutchman blades he uses. So now that's an interesting thing because somebody was telling me about that. That um, are they the American blades and they're regarded as the best blades? Um, you know the the, the four scroll sword. And somebody was telling me about it last week that they they don't get on with them at all. I think it's it's obviously a very subjective thing, isn't it? We've stuck with the Nikua, the Nikua ones for years and years. We tried the spiral blades years ago, didn't work. I've tried it now, the Pegasus ones. They seem better, the Pegasus spiral blades, than the other ones that I tried, but still not 100% not with them at all. Now then, uh, going back to our little project here, um, what we're going to do, I'm going to super glue our little Cupid onto the design. A couple of reasons, well, the main reason for this, it'll actually make the carving a lot easier because if we don't if we don't super glue it down it's such a delicate fine uh, little 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 project then that um that that will be yeah very difficult to carve so we get our position roughly where we want it i think about there stick it down give it a couple of seconds because it's cold here in the workshop so we give it just a couple of seconds to and set. The reason it's cold is because somebody forgot <coughs> to set the fire up. Yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't even realise that Dad had lit the fire. So apologies for for it being cold in the workshop to Tom's wood carver. Now then, I'm going to re uh, reposition the camera. So I'm just going to move that one out of the way. Reposition the camera, and we get on with doing some uh, with some carving. Nice thing with this new, uh, the new camera we're using, um, it's not as, it's not as challenging to to get our focus and things like that. So that should be pretty good. Right, we're just going to get here. We are now. That should be in focus. Have you explained why you're using two different timbers? Yeah. So um, another point with that. The reason we're using the two different timbers, as I said, some of this is geared towards beginners. So hopefully it'll be useful for anybody who's uh, absolutely starting out. I know some of you are more experienced. Um, but the reason is it, it brings out that carving. It, it, it sort of, um, it's that contrast. So something that we use quite a bit is to contrast those two colours. Uh, there was another point I was going to say as well for, for beginners. And it's gone out of my head, but it'll come, it'll come back to me, I'm sure. So what we're going to do then, we're just going to start working on bringing out the, the detail. Now this is a, a carving that I've done on many occasions before because we use the Cupid on Love Spoons. But this is a slightly different, different idea. I thought it would be a nice project for you know anyone learning, anyone starting to have a go. A good one for you to, to start, start working on. When I did this earlier, one thing I didn't do, I didn't super glue as much on the, towards the front, and then that caused me problems later. It made the carving more difficult because it was that much more delicate at the uh, at, at the tip. And it is this one here. When you do carve it, if you, if anybody does have a go at doing this one, that bit there, because you haven't got on the uh, the heart shaped tip tip of the arrow because you haven't got anything supporting underneath it this bit here you've got to go very very carefully on because it's, it's extremely delicate yeah apparently uh fd blades flying dutchman blades are american 
Yeah, now it's interesting because somebody was telling me about it. They're American ones, and they were saying that um, they got they got a really good reputation. And I do apologise because I'm trying to remember who who told me. And it's, it's I do apologise because it's gone out of my head. And it was on it was one of yourselves um, who told me. So apologies that it's gone out of my head who who it was. Trying to Johnny, you're looking good. Where did you get your mask from, Dave? Where did you get the mask from? That's a trend one, and I don't I don't know why. Um, it's an adapted, it's an adapted trend one, fantastic mask, um, and I don't know why they stopped doing them, and they stopped doing the filters as well. Well, I, I, I can imagine it's probably to sell more masks, basically, isn't it? That's the, uh, that's the idea behind it, but um, yeah, good, good mask. And you can buy then the, the visor as an accessory, but you, you can't get them so much now. Um, where do we get them from, did? I'm thinking... Over the years, we, I mean, locally, we've got um, a gentleman called Timberman. Um, he he sells different equipment, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, Axminster Tools. I mean, the thing is, you go one. online and search, search online, isn't it? That's the best way. Yeah, it? Trend have replaced that mask with a different type, um, but I'm not sure that they do the visor with it. It suits me because Dad now hasn't got the um, same problem when he, when he uses the scroll saw. Because he, he wears glasses, you've got that protection for your eyes. But myself, I don't don't wear glasses yet, so um, I haven't got that same same level of protection. And since the coronavirus, a lot of people now are using these yeah. uh, type of visors. Well, there's been there's been a fair bit of interest in in um, in my mask since then because nobody's nobody's ever seen them like that before. They're quite unusual, yeah. um, and and so people have been asking, how can I get one of those masks? And I said, well, you can't because they they don't seem to do them any longer eBay or something like that would possibly be the only place. Now this is where, the way I've glued it is, is helping me this time round because earlier on I could see it moving. It was it's quite delicate on that point there, which is quite off-putting. But because I've left a bit more wood there, it's a bit stronger. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to say, but I, of course, sanded the, the background so it was nice and flat for you, see, Dave. Oh, you've done a tremendous job. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. Absolutely. As always, yeah. As always, so you know, I, I think that's got a lot to do with it, Dave. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. So yeah, again, anyone starting out, you can see we mark, we sort of have a, a similar format for our projects in terms of we're generally marking out with a vertical grain. Um, we're working then initially on our scroll saw after you've marked everything out, done any drill holes for doing the pierce work. And then we use the hand tools and the, the hand carving just to give the project just a, another level, really. But it's, um, yeah, it's a lovely process. Yeah. Yeah, Interested to know as well, you're, um, I'll throw it open to everyone. Yourselves, do you, um, you know, be interested to know, uh, the, especially the regular people who, who've been here a few times with our uh, live streams, do you do wood carving as well as scroll sawing? Is it mainly scroll sawing that you're interested in? Um, that to be a, or is it something that you're getting into? Um, yeah, just out of curiosity, really, what is your your main sort of um, main interests when when it comes to woodworking? It's always great to know what everyone is is up to. It's surprising. Um, the Welsh love spoon uh, doesn't seem to have. Well, no, that's our main. Appeal. That's right. That's our main thing. Then is, is is making love spoons. That's our sort of day job. But it's it's not a. Um, it it doesn't get the sort of international exposure then that that, that a lot of um, other things do. And it's amazing how how many people are sort of not not familiar with it. This one here, um, the wood as well that we're using, is a piece of mahogany. Recycled? Yeah. Generally speaking, we're we're working in in hardwoods. The backing piece that has been taken then from a piece of furniture, and I believe what would you say with that one, dude? Probably a piece of chestnut or something, isn't it? The the backboard. Well, that we use. I would. Be suggesting or do you think it's also a little piece of satin walnut, yeah. possibly. There we are. It's got that um, look it's got to that it. Green and that feel. It's basically. Well, it's interesting because it's 
it would have been cheaper wood then, would it? I like a satin walnut wouldn't have been there, would it? I don't know. Years ago, you see. They they basically put it in the furniture as yeah, as, as a piece of wood that. Furniture. that but the, it's a piece of wood in the furniture that nobody was going to see. Um, that's why no, I wonder. No, this this possibly would have been. Oh, you're thinking that that was at the front. Yeah, and it could have been uh, even recycled. So it's you know it maybe had. This is the third life it's had now. There we are. Yeah. So you can see we're just shaping that all round. Once we finish shaping it all round, then again we'll add some extra some extra detail to the carving. Now some of the things that we got coming up on the channel we've done. Um, Are we going to rest? Couldn't oh. you put the heart cut out in under the arrow to support it while you carve the tip? Yeah, good idea. Where's the rest of the heart? The only Drawback. The only no. drawback is I cut the heart in half. <laughs> so I can't do it now. No, but the other thing is, um, uh, could you put the heart cut out? Yeah, I see where you yeah. Yeah. yeah, you put yeah. it underneath and it'll support it better. Yeah, yeah spot yeah. on. But you, could, you, could, you could still put half a, half yeah. a heart. It'd be half hearted then. Oh dear me. <laughs> Thomas the Woodcarver's. Weeding out the terrible puns. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's there's all sorts of little um that would have made yeah, little ideas like that. Yeah, absolutely. Make make life easier. If only I'd have thought of it when I was carving the the tip. Yeah. There we are. So we're just shaping that all round. And the next little bit is just to add some oh, detail. I'm, shop. I'm looking at the scrolling and carving. I've been collecting a few old carving tools over the last few months. Oh, brilliant! So, uh, any interest in any interest in names on the old on the old tools? Because you get we get we use we use the vintage gouges. Fantastic to to work with, and some oh, of them got an amazing well, this, history. This is what I, I you have to work out. Right. Trying to get, didn't I joke, but trying to get to the point of using scrolling, yeah. carving and turning to make fusion pieces. Yeah, fantastic. Good idea. So using all the different skills together, I, yeah, that's that's a really good idea. And that's how to, that's how to create some really unique pieces and um, really take your work onto, onto another level. That's what we do with... Um, Wood carving was, was our background. Um, we've tried wood turning. We don't get on with that much, do we? It's not never been our... No, I used to be really giddy. Yeah, you, you, str you struggled with, the, with it going round and round, didn't you? Yeah. You know, I've been a carpenter by trade, a joiner by trade. I always worked with the grain. So oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get that concept. Of I where... still... You're still trying to work with the grain with wood turning. Yeah. But it's a, uh, ah, you know, I think uh, if you like machinery and you're confident with machinery, it's a good one to have a go at. That is, yeah. Well, I'll give you my my turning. my experience with it. We turning. we have got a we have got a lathe here, and yeah. Um, yeah. My last attempt, I I I turned a base. And I would thought, oh, it's fantastic. And then going through different grades of sandpaper to finish it off. And yeah, I thought, great. And then I heard two popping noises. There's something on here I don't understand. Dropbox, eh? Dropbox? Yeah. Yeah? It's full. So. Oh, now he's reading things on my desktop. That's what it is. Sorry, apologies for that. Thomas the Woodcarver is reading uh, messages from Dropbox to tell me that I need to, need to sort it out. <laughs> yeah. Things you don't expect in a, a wood carving, scroll sawing live live stream. Concerns about the space in the drop box. Here we are. So you can see we're just finishing off with that one there. In terms of the last little bit of detail, we're going to put a few fingers on the cupid holding the arrow. We've got two ideas: one from Tommy's workshop, one from Midnight Joker. Two more what? Sorry. Oh dear. Oh dear, yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, two horrible popping noises, and uh, that was the last time I did wood turning. That was a, a fair few years ago. Now then, as you can see, we're to there, and as always, so for anyone starting out, we tend to stick with that same process. 
where we use shellac to finish. So you'll notice, you know, and as we put more content on our channel, they, they do tend, our projects tend to follow a similar sort of format where we mark it out, we cut out on the scroll saw, we then do our hand carving, and then we're finishing with shellac sand, sanding sealer. Um, again, if you use other methods, yeah, interesting to know, what methods do you use? Because there are lots of different ways, lots of different methods you can use for finishing. Um, that is our preference. Over the years, did what methods have, have you used? You used to use Danish oil many years ago, didn't you? Danish oil was one of the things we used to use. Um, yeah. French polish yeah. was another one which is very similar to this in, in, in its finish. Um, except you had to put sort of, oh dear me, you really had to work at, at French polishing. It, it, was, it took too long. Um, we used to use occasionally button polish. It yeah. was all depending on the, the finish you wanted. And the project in it, in itself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and there were different varnishes. Um, you know, there was a, a doing matte finish varnish, a clear. You know, we, we you tried used to do all this, sorts of things. And because you used to do external yeah. work and things like that, you would use different yeah. different finishes for doing external work. Um, I've, been, I've been in the trade. I must say, I I would have used a, a far better brush than the one that Dave has chosen. Yeah, it, I, it's it's. Uh, I, I like this brush because basically the other ones we've got, we buy we buy the brushes from from B and Q, and we need to get another one because the the bristles on the one are terrible for for coming off on it as with yeah. this one. But that one's seen better days, I think, Dave. It it has seen better days, but it's it's doing the job. It's doing the job. Yeah. And I, it's over doing the years it's as doing well. The job, but it's not doing it very well. But there we are. It's doing it slowly, but it's getting there. <laughs> It's, um, yeah, over the years as well, when it comes to finishing, I remember, because we use Fiddy Shellac, I remember once we, we, we tried some other things that they did. We tried things like the hard waxes and tried all sorts over the years. Tommy Grosjean, some marbles, some with hexagonal handles. Can't yep. remember the name. Some are marked 1911. Wow. So you'd have some decent steel in those if they're 1911. Right. So there we are. That's just a simple little Valentine's project. Um, I'm going to put it down like so. And I know I shouldn't really do this now, but I'm going to, because um, it's, it's drying. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, what do you reckon? Should I try and save myself having to buy a Valentine's gift now? Well, uh, you better whisper just in case Yolly's listening. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think of that. I, well, last time I checked, she was watching the, she was watching the snow on Spanish telly. So... I should be alright. So what I'm going to do, just to finish it off, and again, this is something you can do as you know for, for anyone learning, is is just to personalise it. So we're going to do a simple name on there. So I'm going to put my wife's name on there. Let's have a little look. So we go. And this one here, the gouge we're working with is a sorby. So the method that we use to doing this, we do all of those stop cuts and then uh, use the stop cut as a barrier. Henry Taylor, some good marbles. Oh yeah, all good. The modern crown gouges. I'm not familiar with crown. No. No, that's a that's one I know. Yeah, but don't isn't there one that oh no, so like a footprint type, yeah. Um there used to be one with a crown on. Right. No, it's not doing about that. Oh, there's lot, there's lots of different uh, makers, but yeah, Henry Taylor, yeah, they, they, they've they've always made they've always made decent decent tools. Can I, can I bring my bit of work? You know, I've been doing the day there. Yeah, of course you can. Okay, I don't like deviating now, and you probably tell me off later. Don't take a minute. Here we are then. So you can see we're just doing those. So for doing letters, carving them on there, and we got a video that we're gonna do when we get time where we show different methods of doing um, text on the scroll saw, that sort of thing. But this is the most common method we use, is to hand carve names, letters, initials, dates. So good skill to develop is being able to personalize things because, um, yeah, if, if, if something is made personal, it just gives it a little bit more meaning. So all of our love spoons, we, uh, well, not all of them, the ones that people want, names and dates and initials, 
on them. We put them on. I'm going to finish off with a capital Y because my wife's name is Yolanda. So we're going to put Yoli on this one. And that is a. I'd probably give it this for, for Sint Win Wednesday. So, so Thomas Woodcarver is, is, is coming in now with his with his project. I think I'll probably um, move the move out the way so so you can show everybody. Now then, I'm going to put a little bit of shellac in this, and I put the lights in place so everybody can see the finished project, and then you will see the the project that Thomas Woodcarver has been working on, which again we will bring you. A video of. I think we need a little bit more, a tiny bit of shellac on there. Here we are. Do you want to check if there was any other comments or questions on there? Um. Right. So we got the shellac on that one, and now where's our little lights? If I turn it upside down, and maybe. Whoop. Yeah. yeah. It's a heavy project that he's got there. Now these little lights as well, um, what I actually did with the other ones, I actually super glued them in place. They were a bit challenging to super glue, they didn't seem to be taking super glue very well if I'm honest, but um, we did get there with them. And this one is not pushing in easily. Oh, I've a good turning to Ah right, that's why we are near to them. There we are. So Ooh, that's in, six. just like so. And afterwards, then we super glue them. Yeah, super glue them in place. So just a simple little project, including the scroll soaring skills. Can I just turn the light off to show the effect and the, of that? Do you want to turn it off? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll just turn the light off just for the effect. Yeah, so you'll see that on the, there. So you'll see Thomas Woodcarver's adding a bit of extra drama. Yeah. So he's adding a bit of drama to the carving by turning the lights off so you can see how the lights work. Right the so lights. Little, simple little project, nice and personal as well. Right. So, we we're going to finish off where we're going to swap over again. I Thomas Woodcarver is going to... I can put it in bed just for there. Yeah? Basically, if you put it on the vice. Okay, I'll have to come around there. Mate. What I will do, i tell you what, I'll go on the camera and you put it in the vice. Oh, boys, oh, boys, oh, boys. This is something we're going to do at a later stage, isn't it, Dave? There we are. So, yeah, um, yeah, you'll probably have to pick it up a bit. I'll tell you what, I, what we do, I'll refocus the camera here. Let's have a look. This is the project that he's been working on. Here we are. It's about six inches diameter. There we go. It's about... Uh, so that, oh, I'm in the old side, so it's three feet, three feet long, okay, and what it, I'll do, I'll put the camera on yourself, you you explain to everyone. Okay, this this was cut down, it's a piece of oak, and this was cut down uh, last week, um, obviously the sap is down now, so this is an oak from our uh, our field, and we had to cut this one down because uh, there were two growing alongside one another, so this one had to go. But this is going to take us probably about two years to, to season. We'll season it naturally, and uh, but it'll be nice to show people, you know, where the timber came from. And um, what we'll do, we'll we'll leave it to dry for 12 months in the log, and after 12 months, then we'll cut it down to approximately half inch strips. And uh, that will be ready then within two years, just drying it out naturally. Yeah. We'll get a good airflow with it. So uh, I, I just thought maybe if anybody's got any logs yeah, so or anything just, like that. that we'll show we'll that, that one there. So that's, that's the logs you can feel. That's a, heavy, that's a heavy piece of wood at the moment because it's, it's full, of, full of moisture. So we give that some time and hopefully that will dry out yeah. nicely. So one other question there as well. Uh, well, not one question, but say, asking about um, internal and external. We use all of our gouges are all external angle. 
So but yeah, you're, you're using them code. basically on, on a external code. angle. Um, yeah, this is sort of a plan we got is is to use sort of local wood, but we we still as well we recycle. Oof, excuse me, that's a fair old weight. Um, we we recycle a lot of wood from old furniture, old buildings, that sort of thing as well. So yeah, another way that that we get hold of the wood, but that's an ongoing project. Hopefully. Uh, in the sort of over the next year, we'll be able to, to sort of bring you some footage of, of that project. Any other comments on that? Yeah, it's just that we'll, we will replace. Yes, uh, it's an ongoing we'll, project. We'll replant another two oaks. That's right. Uh, but a little bit further away from the one that's already left there. There we are. So there we go. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, great to have you with us. We'll be back again soon. We'll be back again for our live stream next week. And. Um, yeah, we've, we've got a mid, another video midweek as well. But thank you all, and thanks for supporting us.